Hi, I'm Dr. Richard Visser, and in this podcast, I will take you on a journey through the wilderness of scientific research and experiential knowledge. Together, we will clear a path to optimizing health, well-being, and longevity. I am a former Minister of Health and Sports with a PhD in Medical Sciences, a published researcher in the fields of obesity, lifestyle medicine, and longevity. I started my career path over three decades ago as a doctor of chiropractic. I'm excited to share my methods, know-how, and experience with you. So please join me on the Visser Podcast. Welcome to episode number 18, Alzheimer's, Dementia, and Cognitive Decline. This is a topic that's close to my heart. It's one that has affected me greatly with seeing my mom, you know, after so many years of taking care of the whole family and being the Patreon in the family, solo, standing mother, businesswoman, you know, everything. My father died when when I was barely eight and so my mom basically never remarried and took you know the helm of the business pharmaceutical businesses in the Caribbean and made something amazing but along the way tragedy struck again when my younger sister passed away in a car accident violent car accident when she was 18 This for my mom was just too much to handle. And you could physically see the trauma this caused, the trauma it caused to her brain. And this really started eating away and moving her towards dementia and Alzheimer's. You know, she passed away about eight years ago and 10 years, her last 10 years were suffering, decline, heading towards, you know, the abyss. It's the scariest thing I've seen. I mean, it's, it's scared me. to be, and, and anyone that has seen this with their parents, loved ones, or friends know how horrible this, this disease can be. So today we're going to do a, a dive in and see what the latest research brings. What are the areas we need to look at? What's in the future? How do we, you know... How do we screen this disease? What are the genetic factors we need to look for? What's the interplay that we're seeing lately with fructose? And what are the steps that we need to take to do the risk prevention? We know 15% of the population, world population, dies of Alzheimer's. It's the sixth leading cause of death. 47 million people have it. And two, two out of three are women. And it's on the rise. So we're going to look at that too. Why is that? Why do women predominantly get Alzheimer's disease? I'll give you a clue. It's the same, same thing we had in the last episode with heart disease. Women are protected as long as they're, you know, have estrogen. As soon as they're, you know, go into menopause, boom, that protection goes. And it's the same with the brain. So we're going to take a little deeper dive into that and, you know, look at, what else we can do to protect protect that part. Alzheimer's disease is part of dementia. It's a neurodegenerative disease disorder that affects memory, cognitive function. You know, so screening for Alzheimer's is vital, especially early detection. And really, you, you can't look at this as just Alzheimer's. You got to look at it as cognitive design, uh, d- decline. And, sh- you know, softly so we'll look at that too because you know at a younger age we could start seeing the signs and symptoms of cognitive you know and it could be for you know listen we we've got mold in our house which affects us we've got air pollution which can affect us we have COVID-19 brain fog which pushes towards Alzheimer's Insulin resistance, diabetes pushes us, trauma to the brain, herpes simplex even, 
right? If it's not treated with acyclovir immediately and kept under hoots, if it's if it's if you have a lot of outbreaks and you know you're just letting it go, it's going to put too much pressure on your brain and push you towards towards Alzheimer's, believe it or not. Chronic stress, we talked about it. We talked about how good, you know, <clears throat> short-term stress is for you and how we need it. And middle-term stress, you know, medium-term stress, we can manage and we can actually train our bodies. But long-term stress is deadly. And so we're talking about long-term stress here with the cognitive decline. So there are various screening methods, such, you know, cognitive tests, brain imaging, genetic testing. And so we're really in this, you know, going to look at that. When we talk about cognitive decline, and this, this is for all of us, all right, because we're going to live, hopefully live longer, especially if you're following this podcast, you're going to live longer and you're going to live better and you're going to live healthier. Guaranteed. So if you're going to do that, you got, you know, you want your brain to be there, right? So we need to look at cognitive decline. And so even if it's, you know, mild cognitive impairment, and what are these? Yeah, this can show up as memory loss. You forget recent events, start repeating the same question, you know, friends complaining about you, language issues, difficulty coming up with words. Yeah, I might have that. Attention, you know, you, the focus. Are you still able to focus and, and, and not get distracted? Reasoning and judgment. You know, you might have problems with problem solving, making decisions, complex planning. This is executive function, you know, completing complex tasks like paying bills, taking medication, shopping, cooking, household cleaning, driving, a more difficult, you know, sense of smell also can be linked, you know, and, you know, with COVID, we know that. So what do we need to measure and get under control? Like right off the bat, what do we, you know, in our bodies, because we know this cognitive decline, it could be mild. What do we need to get in control before we look at the other stuff? Number one, body fat. If you're overweight, if you're obese, that fat will push you towards cognitive decline. It is proven. It is researched. It's also in my own research. So body fat is huge. Biomarkers in cholesterol and lipids, you need to look at those. Inflammatory markers, big inflammation, chronic inflammation, what it does to your you know, arteries, it also does to your micro vessels in your brains, it does to your brain itself, metabolism and memory. We need to do you know, fasting blood glucose, we need to look at home IR to make sure that you know, what's happening to glucose in our body, what's happening to insulin in our body, we need to have this in control. We need to look at our nutrition and we need to look at our family history, which is huge. So all this needs to come together. And really what we're looking at and what we're seeing is that AI, artificial intelligence, is the key to bringing and mapping it out for us because it's just too much information we have to account for to really look at a, a, you know, a real in-depth assessment per person, meaning personalized, to be able to say, okay, this is a personalized guide for you that you need to follow to, you know, be on the prevention pathway and, and look at the medications that you need to be taking or special vitamins, whatever. When we look at genetic testing, when we, f when we start looking at the first testing that we need, we're looking at this, we're looking at APOE4. So the increased risk of Developing Alzheimer's disease is it, one of the markers is APOE and APOE we have APOE2, APOE3, and APOE4. And so this comes in 2, 2, 2 into the body. You know, they're pairs. And they could be combined. So you can have APOE2, 3, APOE3, 3, 3, 4. So the twos are harmless. The threes are middle of the road. They're not that bad. The four is bad, and the four in combination is bad, depending on family history, depending on, you know, what, what we're going to be looking at. So we're looking at the different, the different factors there. Dr. Richard Isaacson, professor of neurology at Cornell University, 
is studying this and, and he's looking, when we look at someone that has the APO4 or APO34 or is, you know, someone that you say, okay, this one is at high risk to developing Alzheimer's. It doesn't mean you're going to develop them. It just means you're at high risk. If you also have a subtype, Clotto, then you'll neutralize it. So those people are lucky. However, if you have the haplotypes, TOM40 genes causing mitochondrial declines, this makes it worse. Okay, so we need to look at that. We need to look at TNF alpha gene for pro you know, that's pro inflammatory. Reeling 1 and 2 amyloid precursor protein genes, because this is activating the amyloids. Plaque in the brain, which we know we see in Alzheimer's patients, including with you know, also the brain becoming smaller. So these are the things we need to look at. If we have, you know, and I think the major prevention center, if we're looking at, if we're looking at this, I would refer you to www.alzu.org, which is a huge site. It's a site of Dr. Richard and his team, and they provide you know, everything, all the information. His, his research is, is mostly geared and focused on prevention. So that's where we want to be. When we look at the risks of women, there is enough research and indication that we need to also be looking at hormone replacement therapy. And if we're catching it early enough, if we're in premenopausal, hormone replacement therapy has shown to be very protective. Now, there are those of the conservative medical groups that feel that if you come in late after menopause and you go into, you know, hormone replacement therapy, you might push it further along. So, you know, I'm, I err on the side of, you know, protection with hormone replacement therapy because we've seen that. We've seen that, you know, when women, you know, perimenopause, when women go through menopause, they lose the protection. So, and we see it over and over again. So, Alzheimer's is also connected to or considered brain diabetes, type three. Why? Because this is the interplay of sugar. Pathways, you know, the microvascular pathways, diabetes, mitochondrial dysfunction, and metabolic syndrome play a massive role in Alzheimer's and pushing us towards that. So next, we're gonna look at, a, at an interplay, the fructose interplay to the brain. And when we look at this, you know, I wanna to refer to another Richard, Dr. Richard Johnson, and his book, Nature Wants Us to Be Fat. And he really focuses on this hypothesis, and the hypothesis that fructose is the main culprit and fructose will come from sugar it will come from you know high fructose corn syrup those are the main contributors and high fructose corn syrup is in everything every package we eat man you know all our chips packaged chips all our you know all the highly processed foods this is what they're made with and so it's a huge danger. It's an attack on our system. And we're getting so much of it that it's almost a chronic attack on our system and our brain that then starts, you know, declining and degenerating into Alzheimer's and dementia. So the link is there. We're seeing, you know, high levels of fructose can lead to insulin you know, resistance, metabolic dysfunction, and oxidative stress in the brain, all of which contribute to the neurodegenerative conditions like Alzheimer's. So when fructose hits, it lowers ATP levels, it lowers energy, but increases hunger. It promotes foraging, kind of like a bear that's getting ready to, you know, go hibernate. They forage, they have to gain weight, they have to, you know, fill up. And so we have a cutoff of leptin, which is our satiety hormone. Leptin gets cut off. And so we can't get enough. We need more sugar. 
we need more you know fructose and really with this state our muscles go limp our brain starts shutting down because it's like being attacked with this fructose our brain produces fructose and the fructose causes the hippocampus insulin resistance and blocks the mitochondria lowers the ATP production while increasing inflammation and we know how bad this is when inflammation is increased and held for chronically for a long time it breaks down our own tissue our own brain so this is where this is where you know we have what we call the switch what you know they talk about the switch gets thrown and the switch is basically where this starts happening kind of like a beer uh, that goes to hibernate and you know and is foraging so the switch basically happens when satiety is blocked so leptin is blocked atp is lowered that's the energy we use the energy that we need to run our bodies the mitochondrial the mitochondria which are the what which are the little you know in our cells these these are the you know the production of energy these are the this is our factory of energy producing in in the cells starts downgrading can't produce start you know you know so then there's even more hunger if that happens then all of a sudden muscle cells don't uptake glucose when that happens there's more free glucose in the body there's more fructose in the body triggers the brain to produce more fructose and puts the brain under attack so do you see where this is going this is going directly to what we eat our nutrition sugar intake carbohydrate intake it goes directly into ultra processed foods processed foods real links this is not you know I think it's not good for you and you shouldn't do it no this is real links directly to neurodegeneration so when when the production okay of a fructose becomes high our brain starts shutting down because it's under attack and what it's what the body or nature you know our natural immune system is deciding is okay we need to shut some stuff down because we're going we're under attack and we need to conserve so we need to store fat we need to shut parts of the brain down memory we don't really need it we need to survive that's not one of the things we need to survive so shut that down those parts get shut down the hippocampus you know inflammation starts acting up so you get you know mitochondrial suppression in the brain ATP you feel lethargic you don't have energy you're not moving this is basically a cycle that continues and gets worse and is an insult on our body and our brain so one more thing I wanted to add here is that glucose converts to fructose and it does this by utilizing your uric, uric acid so that comes from like meat and carbs if you're eating a, a lot of meat and carbs Mm -hmm. or salt and carbs so the salt basically disconnects uh, the fructose from the glucose producing you know more and making also glucose produce fructose so french fries with salt not a good idea potato chips with salt man you're just you're just rolling the dice on this and I love just like anyone else I love to have it once in a while but it's not good for the brain it's not good for you because it's that conversion to fructose in the brain this is huge um, we talked about women and and their increased risk two out of three women so we need to adopt a healthy lifestyle we need regular exercise maintenance of you know balanced diet low in sugars saturated fats we need to engage in mental stimulating activity we need to get enough sleep it's important for the brain health we need to ma manage our cardiovascular health we need to stay socially active and we need to stay involved you know if we look at the main Alzheimer's you know causes age 
you know, it, it comes with age, so 65, if, you know, if you don't have anything else that's outstanding that we talked about before. Family history and genetics, so you really have to look at that. Down syndrome, if that's in play, that becomes a very early onset of Alzheimer's. Women, of course, have greater risk than men. Mild cognitive impairment, individuals with mild cognitive impairment have increased risk of Alzheimer's. So that's why we got to attack that before anything happens. Cardiovascular health, including conditions like high blood pressure, high cholesterol, obesity, diabetes, all this increases the risk to develop Alzheimer's disease. And lifestyle factors, smoking, alcohol, sedentary lifestyle, the same things we talked about when we talk about the foundation work. We, we see the ATP decline, we see mitochondrial decline. Well, what builds mitochondria? VO2 max, our endurance engine. We have to go back to that chapter. What's that? Chapter four, five. We have to go back and look at that. How do we increase our mitochondria? How do we make our mitochondria work better, more efficient? This is what, because Alzheimer eats it away. Fructose eats it away. We've seen this now. Muscle structure. So we need to look at strength training, hypertrophy training. Nutrition comes to play, hugely comes to play. And we might be talking, depending on how your testing goes, if you've got the genes, we might be talking adding specialty B vitamins to your nutritional plan, omega-3 fatty acids, ALA, EPA, the rest of them. So there's a huge interplay with nutrition in this. So these are keys that we need to be playing with, that we need to be you know, maximizing to make sure that we're doing everything we can to prevent this horrible disease. And, you know, being, having been through it myself and, and seeing my mom go through this close up, it's hor it's scary. You know, it's someone's, someone going into the abyss. It, it is, it is really scary. It is the scariest thing I've seen. I mean, it scared the bejesus out of me and, and saying, you know, I never want to go that route down that route I, I don't that's just you know slowly losing who you are slowly losing reality memory everything everything it's an empty shell in the end it's an empty shell that starts where organs even lose their their identity and start shutting down on you it's it's amazing how this thing slowly within 10 years or sooner just brings you to death. It's a slow, agonizing death. And you don't want it, trust me. So let's learn more about it. Let's keep going with this research. Let's look at the references I have. Go to the website. Start testing yourself on, on you know, decline. Start making sure you stay sharp. We're going to need it. We're going to live longer. We're going to live healthier. We're going to need this. So let's keep this up. My next episode, I promise, is going to be lighter. It's not going to be this heavy stuff, man. This was heavy for me. So <laughs> it's going to be very good. Thanks for joining. If you haven't yet, subscribe. Ring the bell notification. Let's continue on this journey. We've got a lot to learn. We're going to live longer. We're going to live stronger. We're going to be healthier. Trust me. So please join me. And let's get it going.